there planner friends and welcome to this my first video of 2019 and it is a video kind of diving into my 2019 setup in my 2019 planner which is the Hobonichi Weeks which of course if you've seen my previous video uh, you kind of got a look into already at least what I was doing for the month of December and how I was using it to plan the final weeks of school and that sort of thing but uh, I have since been on vacation, <laughs> well not vacation, but been on winter break. So I've had a little bit more time to actually dive in here and do some of the work in it that I want to in order to get me off on the right foot for the new year. And I just wanted to give you kind of a glimpse into that. So again, Hobonichi Weeks. Um, Mine is the Weeks Mega in Banana, I think, and I have the cover on cover that is uh, in the woods or something like that. I haven't really filled these pockets yet. I am putting some of these, the excellent note taker um, pages in here, only because if I need to make a list or something, uh, like a shopping list or like a decluttering list, I don't know, what what have you. Um, I felt like it would be good to put in there because I don't want to rip anything out of these pages at all. Um, so I haven't really filled it. I think I am going to put some stickers in it, but I haven't really cleaned up my sticker clutch from um, just what I was keeping in my purse and I want to be a little bit more streamlined in the coming months and everything just with going back to school for my last semester and all of that fun stuff and I don't know it's kind of I guess it's not that bulky but I think it would put some added bulk into this cover. Plus this is a six size, this whole little clutch, and it doesn't fit terribly well into this um, notebook cover. It would hit on the side, and I don't think I want to do that. So I haven't figured it out yet. I might just use maybe one of my plastic dividers I have hanging around from previous three ring binders and fashion something. But that's for when I have the time. <laughs> but for now, um, so this is what I'm using. As far as ephemera and stuff, I got this in a cute things from Japan order. It was just like a, a little gift that they put in and it was so random and so weird. And even though I'm not a hot dog person, even though I am not um, someone who like idolizes New York or anything like that, I cannot get over how fantastic this thing is. I think it's just like a little note card that you can send maybe, um, like a little piece of stationery. See it's blank on the end. But it comes in this wax bag. Um, like wax food bag and it's just the most adorable thing so I just uh, attached it here with a little bit of washi tape. I have my favorite photos of course, my husband and my pet pup and our cat and this time I did not uh, tape them down. I actually peeled them off the back of the sticker because I have one of those um, Polaroid uh, printers. I also have my return information in case this ever gets lost. And this is the first bit of customization that I've done. So I used Google Translate to like um, kind of read to me or show me what all these uh, symbols and stuff meant before I covered them up. It didn't get like a, a great translation on that so I don't know what that was but this was this year last year and the coming year I think um, then these are all the important holidays in the Japanese calendar and then uh, this had year of the dog 
it did not identify what this is, but if this is year of the dog, then this is whatever 2020 is. Um, which means this, which it also didn't pick up, would probably be year of the pig, since it's year of the pig this year. Um, or it will be come Chinese New Year. Which is because I've already gone ahead and pre um, Lunar New Year, February 5th. In case you were wondering, it is a holiday that um, my husband and I kind of uh, celebrate or observe because he is Chinese. Um, so these are my amendments to this full setup. So I washied over the symbols for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just using some of my favorite washies. I like that it had the past calendar, so I kept it, but in order to make it a little bit more demure and a little bit um, less of a visual focus, because I didn't want to get like confused or whatever, which is silly, but still I kept it very simple, like a soft black and white washi. 2020 though, this is some, some pink, pink grid washi here. And then I just used... Again, this is like one of my favorite washi combos. Um, this is the band, like washi stickers that come on a roll. And then this was just some random washi that came in a simply gilded box, which at first, at first impressions can be deceiving because I initially thought, oh, whoop, these are not my colors. This is not going to be for me. This is just too random. I don't like it. But then once I actually started using it, I fell in love, so. I took a piece of Tomoe River paper from a notebook, one of these Hobonichi notebooks, which I actually purchased. They come in a three pack, um, but unlike their A6 brethren, they are not perforated, which is a bummer. They are actually stitched in, so if you're looking for like a little Tomoe River insert for your traveler's notebook, I highly recommend these. Um, however, if you're looking for something perforated, it might just be a pain to rip them out. But I did so, and I pasted that in here, just for notes that might come up. This is like your standard sort of calendex that might be in a bullet journal or something like that. I don't know what all I will use this for, but I think for now, my eye is to use this as a period tracker because I would like to have that built in where I can see the data all in one go for the year or from month to month because I have been keeping track of it kind of monthly in like my monthly clutch of um, health information and stuff like that, but at some point, in order to actually process the data, I would have to put it into some other sort of format, like uh, a graph or like an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. This way it's much easier. It's already built up. And the space that you receive is so like finite that I figure it would be a good use of it because I don't see myself future planning in that tiny space because I have all of these calendars already available to me and I'm already planning in them so like my first day back at one of my jobs is next week next Wednesday my spring semester technically starts on the 19th Though, I don't think we'd actually go back to school until the 22nd because it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why it starts on a Saturday. And then, like I said, I've already put in my monthly, uh, or all the observed holidays. All the holidays that I observe or that might uh, create an issue with the plan or something like that. As well as some birth dates. And all that fun stuff. So that is the monthly section. And then I have been trying to plan in this in the weeklies. 
uh, this was the first week. In these three weeks, I was still in school. This is by far the prettiest I think I've done so far. Um, and just getting used to that. I like this space because it's limiting and it really fo forces you to reckon with what you can actually accomplish in a day. I still don't know what really to do about this side. So for this week, this was the week before Christmas, and I really hadn't done any shopping up until this week. So this is where I planned out like what I was getting people, um, what I was making, and that sort of thing. And then this shifted halfway down the week to being less um, appointment based and less uh, event based and more like little to do's. Like I needed to pick something up, I needed to bake something, I needed to go somewhere or something like that. Um, so I found that even though I'm not in school this semester and I don't have, or no, I take that back because I will be in school next semester. But although I'm not in school for the break, um, and because my two jobs are both in schools, I'm not at work either, I'm still filling up my weekly with little tiny teeny tasks like uh, Friday the 28th. I wanted to write thank yous, I didn't get around to it. I wanted to make lunch for my husband, oh, I did not do that. Um, I didn't make dinner, so haha. -ha. O for, no, not O for two, one for two. Um, I wanted to put away all my fall semester junk, and I did. Finish my ink inventory in the back, which I did. Um, my washi inventory update, because I kind of keep a washi inventory in one of these um, washi books, which I see that they now carry at jet pens, which is awesome. But I realized I hadn't added any of my Simply Gilded stuff. So these are all my 2018 editions, I guess, to my washi collection. Um, and this was just stuff I already had. So I have one of these for stickers and I have one of these for washi. Oop, that was my battery pack. So yeah, tackling the little things, um, this has been really good for. Again, I'm still struggling with what to do in this space, um, but that's okay. Let's see, this is this week. I put a lot of decoration in it because I figured if all else fails, at least I'll have some of this blank space dealt with. And again, I've just been doing little things and kind of documenting what I've been spending my day on. And that is a lot of Super Smash because that was my birthday present, not birthday, uh, Christmas present for my husband. But we got it early um, and we've just been playing all break. I have shifted into using this stencil. At first I thought it was too small and it wouldn't really work for me. So I had been using my Ink by Jen stencil instead, but I think this is the size I wanna strive for. So next week when I go back to work, I'm still gonna stick with my um, triangle, circle, square um, sort of key, but I'm going to be using these tiny ones because I feel like it looks a little neater, and that gives me a reason to use this, I guess. And that's about it. I've been using these index stickers on the first full week of the month, and I think I need to bite the bullet. Which is poor choice of words. Um, I think I just need to commit to this planner, which I've already done in my mind, but there's something about laying down these index stickers that feels so permanent. Um, but I think I need to go ahead and just put them down for the rest of the year because I am going to stick in this for the rest of the year. So this is the um, additional note space I have because I bought the Mega Weeks, 
which means I have 200 um, plus pages of just blank paper in the back. And I did this because I wanted to incorporate some of my favorite elements of my bullet journals into the consistency and the um, available forward planning space that there is available with the Hobonichi week. I went through both of my bullet journals a few days before the beginning of the year and I was just flipping through kind of to see um, the spreads that I enjoyed or the spreads that I thought I could improve, just what I would like to include in the bullet journaly part of my 2019 planner. And I came up with some ideas like the books I've read list, my uh, reading notes, I want to continue with those. But those will be like monthly. I already put this tab on for December and basically that means everything in this section happened in December. So I have reading notes from two of the books I read that month. Um, then I want to have a semester at a glance because I found that helpful last semester. I want to have a semester book list. This will be my third semester using it and so far it's really helpful especially when it goes to not only compiling the list of what you have to buy but also when it comes time to sell it back to the school or sell it on eBay or whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's nice to have that reference, like the ISBN number, all in one place. Let's see, and then I have my sleep trackers, which I used every month, and I used my play dot markers for that. I wanted to incorporate that, but this month it wasn't such a success, at least in December, so that had to be modified. Tracking my health, it was more just the period tracker that I was interested in, so that took care um, or that will be taken care of in the yearly log. My purchase trackers, what I did last, um, my hair dye tracker, online order tracker, which failed miserably in my A5 planner, but I think it was because my shopping was so out of control that that's why it failed, because I couldn't account for all the things that I was getting, and I will work to improve that in 2019. Uh, binge watch list, I'm still not sure about that because I've been doing something kind of like listing what I've been watching, but I find that that's kind of of no consequence compared to reading notes, and I find when I talk about literature, I talk with kind of authority and knowledge and all this, um, learning that I've done in this field, so maybe that's where my confidence comes from. When it comes to cinema, which is like so related and everything, it has a narrative, it has emotion, it has everything that literature has, um, I feel like I'm kind of at a loss. I do not have that confidence and I cannot speak to the impact or what it means in the same way that I can talk about literature. So I want to get better at that, and I think me just listing what I watch isn't going to accomplish that. I think I need to do something like uh, movie notes or something like that when I see a movie, or just to kind of wrap my head around what I think about it. In that way, it'll feel like I'm doing more. I don't know how I feel about that yet, but that's why it's not marked off yet. Uh, I also wanted to keep track of the uh, sunscreens that I was sampling as well as the perfumes that I'm sampling because I was gifted a perfume sampler by my little brother for Christmas and it's a very nice gift and I want to make full use of it. So this you saw if you watched my previous video. It's just the index section, and I gave myself another spread just to account for all of these pages. I set up this really pretty looking um, sleep tracker. However, I fell out of habit. 
a habit that I've had for like six months or something. I fell out of the habit because the squares are too small for my play dot markers. And that was just a bummer to me. I usually don't have an issue with like a cluttered page or with uh, things that are asymmetrical or with things that have white out or cross out marks or something like that. But for some reason this really got to me and it was just not a place I wanted to be. It wasn't a section that I wanted to keep track of. I just wanted to avoid it at all costs. So I went in and I kind of talked about how um, I could utilize the marker still. And the only way I've come up with is with doing a two by two square, but there is not enough space to do it for the hours and the dates. So, I did not do this same play dot sort of tracker in my January setup, or my January month portion, and I might do it in the future, I just need to spend more time on it, because I do have the notebook, which means I can maybe do like a gate fold, like have three pages, and do it that way, but maybe that's too much of a pain in the butt, I don't know. I'll at least try it for one month. Um, but yeah, that's where I kind of fell, or failed in December. Um, my December finance tracker, or the check register that I have, I also kind of failed at midway through the month. I don't know why, I think it's the same reason my order tracker failed. My finances were a mess, but at the same time, I always knew where I was. So it's like, it seemed redundant to write it down as well. Um, I did run into some notes that I had to take for my advising stuff because I met with my advisor again at the end of the semester uh, just to make sure I was on track and everything. And here I'm going to put some information about the CBEST testing that's going to come up here at the next couple of months because my application is due April 1st which means I will need to have passed the reading, writing, and math portion. The reading, writing, I am not concerned about at all. The math, I am just a little bit. I do like the process of math. I feel like my thought process is very linear and it supports that. Um, I just need to get into practice again. I've fallen out of practice and uh, I just need to devote some time to running drills and practice problems probably through Khan Academy which is a really awesome resource if you're trying to teach yourself math again uh, and for those of you who don't know this CBEST is just um, a portion of the California uh, process to become a teacher it's like you have to have a CBEST and a CSET but my degree takes care of the CSET so I just need to do the CBEST and then I had some planner issues, and by writing this out, I found out that it wasn't so much planner issues as it was I've made a lot of progress over the years in my planner journey. I think I've finally reached what I like, what I don't like, um, and all that fun stuff. But in that process, I spent a lot of money, and have spent a lot of space devoted to planner systems that just failed for me. And while I've just stashed a lot of stuff, and I've sold a lot of stuff, and I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff that didn't work, I still have this like graveyard of A5 sized things in my collection. Uh, so at the end of December, when I was really feeling like a little weird about my planner system, I went through my planner stash and I just was counting up the bodies basically. I had um, 2017 inserts from Inkwell Press and Filofax that were just a waste now. I had uh, multiple planner, uh, um, multiple notebooks book pages for A5, like I have Rhodia A5 pads, I have 
Tomoe River paper, um, just blank paper that I bought purposely to punch. I have an A5 sized punch too. I was like all in because I think that's the kind of person I am. I either have to be immediately good at something or I abandon it. <laughs> and that is so bad. But when it comes to like hobbies and that sort of thing, you can kind of lull yourself into feeling like you're all good by buying all of the things. Then you feel like, how can I possibly fail? I have all of the things. I am automatically awesome. But that's not the case. <laughs> and these couple of years, or three years, as a four years as a planner person have kind of taught me that. Um, so it wasn't really a planner issue. It was more feeling bad about the past mistakes that I've made. And I've turned that kind of mistake into an opportunity to kind of get more creative because even though this planner has so much space and Tomoe River paper is great for like mixed media and watercolors and stuff like that, I still feel like I needed a separate space um, to fully get messy and get weird and get sketchy with it. So I took this A5 clip book that I've had for a couple years, these Kiki K index tabs that I've had for a few years, and I just built basically a sketchbook. So I took the various papers I had, like the Tomoe River paper, um, I had some, uh, like, two-thirds of the way used sketchbooks that I pulled apart. They were, um, spiral bound, so I cut them down and punched them, and I've just been drawing, sketching. I want to try and do something kind of creative every day. This is just random black cardstock. I have no idea where that came from. Um, this is me trying to work through like what I'm going to carry in 2019, which seems like such a stupid thing. Something you don't really want to worry about or think about or devote that much energy to, but it's still calming to me. So that's what this first section is. Uh, the second section is just for messy notes. This is some beautiful Filofax paper. I don't know what happened, if they got like better quality paper or what. But this is from 2017, and it is very nice, very smooth and buttery. Um, so this is just for messy notes. This is that Rhodia A5 size, which is misleading. It's the pad that it comes from that's A5, but the actual paper, it doesn't take into account the like inch and a half, two inches almost, that's devoted to the binding that you remove from or that you remove the pages from. But I've been using this for like lettering and just messing around with that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, that's it. I just needed a place to experiment to be messy and to actually utilize my A5 stuff. That was it. And I was just working through some of that here. I also have my media, sorry, my chair is so creaky my winter media consumption, which is just a lot of binge watching. I was into baking shows a lot. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel came back for the second season and I love it. And just random bits and stuff that I've been watching. Then I have my reading notes on the two books that I read this semester. And here's where 2019 starts. This title page is a little messy, it's a little all over the place, but it's all stuff I really like. So I have this serif font that I drew out, a lot of warm tones and all that fun stuff. And I use Tombows for that, and I think it's funny that my Tombows really only come out when I get a new journal or something like that, like when I'm setting it up for the year. So then I started writing kind of my goals or what I'm going to try and do in 2019, like wear sunscreen every day, that's a no-brainer. Um, and something I kind of already do. Um, 
use hand cream at night, um, avoid fast food, then don't leave things till the last minute, do my homework and projects ahead of time, and then plan out those things. Those are just stuff that I want to kind of focus on for 2019. And I'm sure I will add to this list as I go in the year. And the next page is my red in 2019, which is super similar to my um, red in 2018 spread, uh, except this bookcase is very, like, kind of bougie <laughs> with all the finials and uh, fanciness. Um, and I think this year I gave myself space for about 30 books which I think is nice and realistic. Um, if we look at my 2018 um, bookcase, it was more um, realistic as to what bookcase I actually own. Uh, but I think there were about 30 spaces too, but I only read 22 books, which is I mean, nothing to cough at, I guess, but it's also not where I think I can definitely improve. Um, so I'm giving myself that room. And again, the Tombos only come out when I set up a planner. Uh, I don't use them <laughs> throughout the year, probably because they are kind of awkward for me to store on my desk, but that's just me. Um, I also do want to do a year in pixels. I thought about it for last year, but not enough to actually draw it out. I've given more thought to it this year, and I would really like to do it. Um, I think my issue previously was that I didn't want to carry around a bunch of pens with me. And then I wasn't even sure if I would have, like, an ink consistently throughout the year in order to do it. But... I think one of the major consist consistencies in my pen life have been uh, mild liners. Um, so I think if I devote each feeling that I want to track to a mild liner color, I will be more apt to actually complete it. Speaking of mild liners, this is the new one, the um, Brights. And I just want to bring up one thing, and that is a couple of these colors are super similar to other existing mild liners. Specifically, these two are from previous sets. Um, I don't know which one's off the top of my head. I think this might be Vermilion, and this might be... I don't know, <laughs> but um, they are very similar, N nigh on identical to the ones in the new sets. So if you were on the fence and you didn't want to buy it, then don't buy it for these two colors alone. Um, I did a swatch here. This is Fuchsia, the one on the bottom, which is this color from the new set. And then this is the old color from an other, from another set. And to me, they are so similar that it, I don't know, I felt a little disappointed. It is brighter, but then again, I've had this mild liner for at least a year and a half. And I do use it, so that could be why it's so much brighter. Uh, same with Vermilion. It is a little bit darker, and this is the actual new shade, um, which is, let's see, I wrote them down. The new shade is Marigold, and they're remarkably similar. So if you bought them for these two colors, don't do that, <laughs> unless you really want to. The reason you would buy these are for these three colors. I really like this blue, which might also be similar to this one, which I think is dying. I have a replace. No, not that one. Mm. I think I'm lying. I don't think there is anything 
uh, close to that one. And this green and this green. I think this is called spring green, summer green. No, this is citrus green, the really light. Uh, this is summer green, the kind of teal green. And then this is um, lavender. And I do really like the lavender color, so I don't super regret the purchase. It's just two of them are so similar. It's it's kind of sad. But anyways, um, back to your own pixels. Uh, so that's why what I think was preventing me from doing it previously was that I didn't know what pens to use. I didn't want to carry around a ton of pens, which I think is laughable because on any given day I'm carrying around like 10 different pens and I only use like two. The only reason I haven't inked it in just yet is because I don't know what my emotions actually are, like the ones I want to track. Because I did a lot of research, I looked at other people's year and pixels on Instagram or like in their bullet journal setups, but their emotions are like great, fantastic, um, with meh being like a low one or something like that. And I feel my emotions are kind of different. I can get really, really down low with meh being more like my middling. Um, and then I also feel like productive is a feeling for me. Productive is kind of when I go on autopilot, but still I'm able to like go through the day and get a sense of satisfaction with that. Um, so I think that might be on the upper side of middling for me, if this is the line division. Then there's like stressed out, frustrated. I think that comes after awful would come last. I don't know what normal is, so I think I'm gonna have to identify what those two are. But I still need to think about it a little bit. I think I might need to go back to some journal entries just to see what good feels like to me. Although, it's been a couple of days into 2018 already, and so far, I'm feeling pretty good. So, maybe good is a feeling for me. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, so this was my when did I last sort of maintenance spread, which I basically lifted directly from my A6, um, Loish Charm. And I'm just keeping track of some grooming items, um when I last cut my hair or trimmed my bangs, when I last groomed Evie, or when I last took her to the groomer, um, when we last bought food, because she's only tiny six pounds, and we buy her like a giant bag every six months, maybe every five months actually, uh, and the last time we did that was this Christmas Eve. Um, so then I have my hair dye attempts which again I copied from a previous bullet journal special, uh, special, <laughs> bullet journal spread I did this time in my five voice term, and I didn't go all that far back, because at the beginning of the year I feel like my hair had a different color story than it does right now, so I'm keeping it with the kind of color I'm grouping it with the kind of colors that I have right now, so it's kind of dark. Whereas at the beginning of the year it was lighter, so that's why I cut it off at October. Um, then I have my Sephora Sun Safety Kit, all of these samples that I need to try out. So far I've only tried out two, and I think so far the bar is at this long comb that it came with, which is actually full size, which is probably why I haven't tried all these other ones, because I'm still using this one. And I used this one for a good long time, um, and I didn't like it so much. I just liked doing the little line drawings. It was something to do while I was binge watching shows last week, or no, two days ago. I drew this two days ago. 
see, I have a spread for Sephora perfume samplers because my brother gave me this perfume sampler um, with a redemption certificate for a full size of whichever one I actually liked, which is really thoughtful because in on Black Friday we went to Ulta together and I was like, oh, I know what you can get me for Christmas. I need a new uh, Miss Dior because that was the one that I had been using. But I got my sample, my deluxe sample, like five years ago. And I had been using that for five years and it lasted me like that whole time. So I thought that was the one I wanted. But I went to spritz it in the store and it came back and it smelled like completely different. I don't know why, I don't know if it's me that's changed or if it's the product, but it became like a point of ridicule because my brother was like making fun of me all night um, because I just smelled just over the top crazy floral baby powder craziness. Um, so he got me this for Christmas and that was really nice. Um, it's also really appreciated because my husband has like really bad asthma and he's really, certain scents affect him really badly, like cigarette smoke will be insta-triggering for his asthma. Um, and some fake scents too, some floral scents will do it, but so far we've had good luck. And so far I really like this Altier Atelier. Uh, Cologne in Clementine, California. I immediately cracked into this Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium because I thought that would be more my speed since I tend to like something complex a little bit, but it just, man, when is it about scents that just trigger memories? It, like, it's just so visceral, but it immediately brought to mind a certain type of lady I used to work with. When I had a very um, corporate -y job like five years ago or so and it's just not something I want to be reminded of. It, once it actually wore off a little bit um, or mellowed after a few hours it was kind of nice and I could appreciate the like sweet scents and stuff like that but it wasn't for me. I'm also gonna do an order tracker this year I'm going to attempt it again. I have given myself a page. I have no problem making another page, maybe like halfway through at the halfway point of the year, but I really want to cut down on my online shopping because I'm an introvert, because I don't like going out. Uh, I find I do most of my shopping online, but with that, it seems like there's less accountability too, and it got really out of hand last year, I think, personally. Like, no one's told me it has, so it hasn't got to that point, but I just feel bad, so um, I need to fix that. So, so far, when I was going through my planner issues on Christmas Eve, this is how pressing the pressure was, I bought a Rhodia A4 grid pad um, from Amazon thinking, oh, I'll just bullet journal in my A5 planner. That will be my planner for 2019. Knowing full well this planner existed, that I liked this planner, and that this planner was working, I just panic buy and I do that a lot. And that's something I need to work on in 2019, but I've already sent it back, so we'll see. Um, so in order to help me with that bad shopping behavior, I, uh, wanted to do a wish list, but kind of more, why do I want the thing? So, so far I have, like, a Posca paint marker in white, and I'm writing because I've, um, I'm tired of turning to the Uniball white pen. Um, it's been disappointing so far, and it has been. I think I need to throw it away. I think it's gone bad or something. I've tried all the tricks for like gel pens, like you put the 
you take the ink cartridge out and you put it like in a glass of water or you roll it between your hands or you kind of like shift the position it's in um, and it's not consistent anymore so I don't think this is working and I've had experience with the Posca paint marker before I bought one at the middle mark of the year last year and I used it for um, a creative project I was working on and it was beautiful and opaque and lovely but it just died because I used a ton of it it's three dollars which isn't that much money but it kind of is for a pen but then it kind of isn't for like an art supply so this one I probably will buy at some point I just haven't pulled the trigger yet um, also some ColourPop brow gel because I need a new brow gel uh, and I was using Glossier brow, Boy Brow but it's $24 or $16 and that's a lot of money but then again if I buy from Colourpop I have to pay shipping and I do like the Glossier Solution Acid Toner so if I buy the two together then it's $40 I would get free shipping I still don't know what I think about this situation yet, which is why I haven't purchased anything, so it's kind of a good place for me to like stop and sit and think. Um, and then last night I was like, okay, I have to throw away my Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. It was the one that was released last holiday, and it immediately went on clearance. I think I got mine in January for $22, something like that, from Sephora. And I just figured out how to use it like six months ago for like everyday looks. Like um, I used one of the nude shades in there. It's like a mid-tone like taupey brown. Um, and then I would play with like the eyeliner look with one of the metallics or fancy colors. And I was wearing that like every day for the past six months, but it has gone south. It only had a six month shelf life, which I did not know when I purchased it. Had I known, it would definitely have prevented me from purchasing that. And that is why I don't think I will go back to Anastasia Beverly Hills for a palette at all. Um, then again, just because it's going bad doesn't mean I need to replace it with something fancy. But last night I was like, oh yes, I need the Natasha Denona mini star palette because that will be my nude replacement and that's just ridiculous talk it's approximately the same price i paid for that clearance palette last year but i have so many eyeshadow palettes that i think i can make it work with something else and that's actually what i'm going to do later today is i am going to where's today declutter i need to go through some makeup and figure out kind of what I have in my stash and what I actually need. So that's good. It forces me to think about it. it forces me to be real with myself about why I need it. And I crossed this out this morning because I thought about it and I sat on it and I was like, that's just reactionary and I don't need it. Um, I've also pasted together my first page in here. Uh, Again, I'm not usually that picky, but when I was making my sleep tracker for January, it just wasn't working out, and I messed up the dates in like a really crazy way. So I pasted it together, redid it, um, and I went with something more simplified than what I had been doing. So I'm just doing dots. It's like a standard um, grid. And see, I'm doing regular sleep in black ink and naps in red ink. And I've been using the Hobonichi um, branded Jetstream pen because Jetstream is my favorite. I put on another one of these tabs to denote that this was January. I have my check registers all prepped. I think I've only spent twice this month already, so I don't have a lot to fill in. And then there's this. 
so I kind of want to close it out on this. Um, this might take a few minutes, so if you're not interested, you can skip ahead, but if you've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, if you happen to like makeup at all, you probably come across no buys. And that's where someone who really loves makeup, but who also has issues with um, overspending or overpurchasing or a combination of the two, they kind of just realize that they have a problem and they go ahead and they want to do something about it to kind of reverse it. And watching these videos, even though I'm not a huge makeup person, um, I realized, oh shit, some of the behaviors, sorry, <laughs> oh crap, some of the behaviors that they're talking about, like where you idealize a product and think that this will be like your holy grail product, the product that will become, that will signify like change and growth and something how you suddenly start placing it into inanimate objects that have no, that don't have that kind of value that you're just projecting onto them. Um, also about like, it's one way where my anxiety kind of gets to like play is when it comes to mm, new releases. If there is say these markers that come out and Tokyo Pen Shop has them like first off but I know they charge more than like say jet pens then I really debate with myself whether or not I buy them from Tokyo Pen Shop or I wait and chances are I buy them more often than I wait um so and like anxiety too about like say Foxy Fix releases where you know this is the last time they will offer this leather. Do I just not buy it? How is that an option? I want this leather. And I really could have used that money probably. Um, but it's all these things. So I was kind of writing out bullet points. I was honest with myself and said I spent way too money, way too much money on stationary items. Um, I use the excuse that I need it for work, school, or hobbies as carte blanche to purchase things with little or no impunity. And that is true. Uh, I mean, if I replace, say, this mild liner, it's like less than two dollars. And less than two dollars, you can essentially rationalize anything. Um, but it adds up. I have 20 mild liners, I think. I have the full collection. And at $2 a pop, that's a lot of money. Again, there are some that I've had for like years and years, but that doesn't change the fact that rather than wait for something to actually get used up, I buy um, replacements. I have a replacement for this color, for green, for the light gray, for gold, and I haven't used them yet. And I've had those replacements for like a year. Um, I also have way too many pen refills. Um, I made a spread back here for all the inventories I have for my inks. Um, I have so many Coletto refills, so many style fit ones, so many jet stream ones. And the pen that I keep coming back to is the Jetstream, and kind of the style fit and kind of the Coletto. Um, but then again, I have pens like this Sarasa Vintage Collection, which I loved so much when I first got it that I immediately bought a replacement. So I have a replacement of all these colors just waiting in the wings. Um, so I have a problem. <laughs> Um, I have too many pens, markers, notebooks, whether they're bound or spiral. Um, I have way too many just loose leaf paper, way too many inks, uh, way too many leather covers, way too many planners, way too many post-its and sticky notes. 
far as planners go, um, let's see. I have this campus planner that's A5 that I have not used. I have, sorry, getting creepy. This minimal plan edition six month um, B6 planner that I've never used. I have, let's see, this field notes planner, which is beautiful and like my minimalistic ideal, which I have never used. I have so much junk. It's crazy. And yeah, they were relatively inexpensive because again, stationery, paper, pens, that sort of thing, it's not crazy like makeup. Um, so sometimes I tell myself, like along with the fact that I need it for school or work or whatever, that, um, well, it's not as bad as like buying a $40 eyeshadow palette every time they release something new. And while that's true, that's no excuse. Uh, so I use very few of these items. I clearly have my favorites, like my Jetstream pens, um, but my collection is out of control. I have curtailed sticker purchases greatly since 2017, so I don't think that's an issue. And I don't. I sold like a huge lot of planner stickers in 2018 that I purchased essentially in 2017. I used to have like a huge problem and you know that if you buy stuff from like Etsy or now Shopify stores and stuff like that, it quickly accumulates. Um, see, I do have a lot of washi rolls but I also use them a lot. Maybe I do have issues and yeah, I do have issues with washi. I love it so much and again it's so inexpensive and I feel like probably how some people feel about purses or shoes or something like you have one for every occasion or something like that um but I can't possibly use up all that stuff so I need to set up some ground rules for 2019 because the shopping is not sustainable using very no buy terminology and I'll post the specific um youtuber I've been watching and who I follow, who's been doing her own no-buy for 2018, all about her makeup and skincare sort of shopping addiction. Um, so I obsess over things, stupid things, like stationery. It takes up too much money, too much physical space, too much head space, like anxiety and worry and that sort of thing. So... I'm going to go on a replacement only stationary no buy for 2019. This means that I'll buy nothing from the above list unless I'm replacing something I used up. Like that beautiful Sailor Deep Green ink. Okay. I have so many fountain pen inks. I have so many fountain pens because, again, I think it has something to do with that like fear to fail and procrastination where I don't know it's all tied in somehow but I have this Lamy ink this was the color for last year I have two of these bottles I also have this giant Earl Grey ink I also have this gold ink and I also have this sailor ink which is a beautiful deep gray or deep green but this is, like, one of my favorites. Um, so while if I run out of this during my no-buy, I won't repurchase it because it wasn't one of my favorites. If I do run out of this one, I will repurchase it. Now, I have a lot of refills for my Coletto. But just because, like, I don't know, orange runs out. I'm not going to go out and buy orange. I'm going to wait until all the other colors run out too. As far as my jet string goes, which is my favorite pen, um, let's see, this 
specifically these um, size replacements, uh, which I think are the SXR08. Um, same thing, just because it runs out, it may warrant a replacement, but I have so many pens in my collection, period, that I feel like I can take a break with the Jetstream pen and I can focus on a different one um, for a while. So while it is a replacement no buy, I have the discretion to not immediately repurchase it. I can wait. Um, let's see, I will only buy replacement stickers if I truly want them. And right now the only ones I'm thinking of are these super cute um, utility stickers I get from very cute designs. They're like little light bulbs and they have a section to mark off if you paid it. And they have one for water that I wanted to get. But honestly, I have so much in my collection still, even with destashing and selling and giving away so much, that I can make something else work. I don't have to buy it. But I'm giving myself the tiny little loophole to go ahead and do it. The next one's a bit of an issue. So washi is a problem, but it truly brings me joy, which is hilarious. So I reserve the right to make an order from cute things from Japan or simply gilded, but I have to sit on it for 72 hours and write, write about why I want it. So similar to like what I did here, where I basically talked myself out of the Natasha Denona palette, um, I need to do the same thing about the washi that I purchase. So I'm not giving that up completely. Um, and there are a lot of things that uh, cute things from Japan has that I just will never purchase and I have no mm, designs to purchase and there are a lot of things from Simply Gilded that are just not my style but if that one thing shows up like say um, the pigeon paper collaboration which I bought the full set of say if that comes up I won't deny myself that. But at the same time, I won't go shopping for washi. Like, I can spend an hour just window shopping on my phone for pretty washi from cute things from Japan, and I'm going to stop that behavior. Um, the only ones I really have in my mind to purchase are the... Um, small things by Eric Washies because I really like that artist and her like illustrations and carvings and that sort of thing so I've already purchased three of those rolls back in December um the new ones that were released and if new ones get released this year I will most likely buy them but that's about it I'm not going to go out and just buy like all of the maced washi or anything like that. I'm limiting myself. And even if it is part of that artist's line, I still have to sit on it for 72 hours. At the end, we'll see where I am. Maybe I'll reward myself with a special edition Twisby. Cause oh my goodness, have you seen the recent Twisbys that they've released? They have a clear bright green, a clear bright red that's kind of pink. Uh, they have those pastels, the light pink and the light blue. Is it blue? I don't remember. I just, I've seen a lot of the light pink one, but they're so attractive and so appealing to me. But I've recently cleaned some of my fountain pens and there are wonderful fountain pens I forgot I even own and that I don't use. So like this Pilot Metropolitan one, I cleaned it out because I let the sepia ink that was in it just dry up. So I don't use this one anymore, but it's a really nice nib and I really like it, so why the hell am I not? Um, I cleaned my two Kukunos out, which I really like still. The nibs are so nice. 
Um, let's see. What else? Um, let's see. I got this one from eBay last year. It's a medium nib Twisby. It's like a special edition one that they don't carry anymore. And I never use it. Uh, I have this one, which I do use, um, but it needs to be cleaned out. But honestly, how many fountain pens can I really use at any given time? Uh, yeah, it's just ridiculous. I do write a lot. That is true. And while that has been an excuse for a while, I have plenty to sustain me for like two years. I could probably go on a no buy for two years and not actually feel the effects. <sighs> so yeah, I think I also have concerning habits with shopping for makeup and skincare. It's like on the verge. Um, so I'm going to throw that into the no buy too. Again, it's going to be replacements only just like stationery, but only on staple items. And these are the staples I can replace. Ink refills, refill paper for notebooks, dead markers. And what I'm talking about is um, ink refills. I'm specifically thinking about Jetstream, and I'm specifically thinking about this ink, but that's about it. When I'm talking about marker refills, I am only really talking about my outliners and maybe my black Tombow, if that ever goes. It seems to be retaining its ink reserve. Um, when I talk about refill paper, I mean like lined paper. But of course, I'm super extra. I'm a stationary aficionado, and that means that I am only like, I only like Rhodia paper, say, for um, nice notebook paper, which is silly. It's so silly. I feel like a girl with a high-end makeup addiction, kind of. It's just my high-end is stationary, and while it is comparatively less, it's still high-end. Um, but I'm also sitting on like a huge pack of letter-sized Levenger notebook paper that I purchased halfway through last semester that I still have a huge fat stack of so I don't foresee myself buying refill paper anytime soon. Um, as far as staples that I can replace with makeup and skincare, it's mascara, but I recently replaced that so that won't be an issue anytime soon. Primer? But I mean eye primer because I don't wear foundation. Um, toner, face masks, or face wash. Face masks are not a part of my deal. I don't like them actually. Um, moisturizer, nude eyeshadow. But I'm pretty confident I can get that from my own current collection. Um, and a single everyday lip color. I currently do have a single everyday lip color that I got on clearance. Um, and if that dies, maybe I'll repurchase, but it's not so much of a concern right now. So that's my no buy. Um, cause I do have a stationary problem and I'm sure a lot of planner girls can identify you probably are in a different situation. Either you are financially responsible, but at the same time, you just really like this stuff. So maybe you're running out of space in your home for it. Uh, not so much the funds. Um, or maybe you are both like me. Or maybe you're feeling a little attacked, which I don't mean to do. If you have the money, you have the space, you have the time, you use all of these things, more power to you. Please buy all the things so I can't buy them. Um, but yeah, don't feel attacked. I will still watch people do unboxings and that sort of thing, even though I know that is 
probably the kind of consumerist mentality that has gotten me into this position doesn't mean I can't try to live vicariously through these guys. <laughs> Baby steps, essentially. Um, so that's what I'm doing. And I know I'm going to have to write out and think about it. So I'm giving myself, so far, an optimistic page for this year to do so. Um, let's see. And so far, I've only just sketched out, this is where my book list will go, this is where my semester info will go, and this is where my semester at a glance will go, these two pages. Which I won't do until like after the first week of school, once I have all the syllabi compiled and I sit down maybe at a coffee shop and do it like a little treat. Um, that means, and I've done the math, I have about 13.5 pages left for every single month. For 12 months actually, if I continue, or if I, going forward from this point at page 37. So I'm still sitting really in a really awesome position the way I see it anyways as far as my bullet journal goes and I have a lot of these like yearly collections already so the only thing I'll do probably in February is make another sleep tracker another check register and probably a new page on February no by notes so that's about it that is my setup so I hope that was helpful or interesting. If you have any comments on my stationery novi or if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope 2019 is just the best year period for you and um, I am definitely going to work toward making it the best year possible. So thanks again and have a wonderful night.